three, two, one. Thank you. Hello and welcome to this tutorial for AutoArp. In this video, we're going to explore how to utilize Combinator control of AutoArp in a way that some may find useful for live performance. For this example, we'll use a guitar patch from the factory sound bank, which is already set up here. Let's create an AutoArp instance to control it. We're going to do most of the setup on AutoArp via a combinator, but there are a few settings we need to set up first. Let's first set the key to E and the scale to Flamenco. If you want to pause the video to go whip up some tapas, I'll wait. Set the rate of the arpeggiator to a 1 8 triplet. As you'll see later, we're going to switch rates to simulate a strum, so let's set up a second rate. First turn Tempo Sync to off, and then set the rate to somewhere around 22 Hz. Turn Tempo Sync back on for now. The default chords for this scale are all triads, so we'll set the Extend Up setting to 3 to add more notes to work with. Usually guitar strings are allowed to naturally sustain, so set Gate Length to 127. Okay. We've done our initial setup, right click on Auto Arp and select Combine to create our combinator. We're going to use two of the combinator's buttons. Let's label the first one Pick Strum and the second Solo. Now click Show Programmer and select the Auto Arp instance. Slot 1, set Source to Button 1 and target to Tempo Sync. This will facilitate the switch between the two rates we set up earlier. For slot 2, set source to button 1 and target to play count. Set min to 1 and max to loop. Now try it out. So as you can see now, the button will toggle between picking and strumming modes. Let's continue to refine it. We want to have a repeating bass note for our picking pattern. Set slot 3's source to button 1 and target to repeat notes frequency. Set max to 8. To refine the picking pattern, set slot 4 to have button 1 control the play direction. Up when off down and up when on. And the final touch is setting slot 5 to have button 1 switch play mode from linear to skip. Toggle our button to load the settings and let's try it out. As you can see, toggling this button will allow us to change style mid-performance. Check the reason manual on how to map a MIDI control to this button with remote override mapping so you can toggle this via an external controller. Let's add one more mode, the solo mode, which will allow us to improvise with the aid of note mapping to ensure we always stay in scale. Set slot 6 so that button 2 will toggle the arpeggiator. and slot 7 so that the chord generator will be toggled. And finally, slot 8, button 2 to set the input octave shift up by 1. Let's toggle the solo button to see what it does.
hopefully you can see the potential. Experiment, have fun, and make music.